on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about surprising differences between the UK and the US. Today, I'm going to watch a video featuring a fellow American who actually lives in the UK. And these are just all the weird, strange, surprising differences that she has noticed as an American living in the UK. And I have absolutely no idea what to expect, which is great. That's exactly how I like it. So with that being said, let's take a look. So the first difference between the UK and the US that people often don't talk about is that the keyboards are actually different. So- Really? <laughs> The keyboards, I actually, I know she's about to explain it, but I almost want to, I can't even guess what would be different between the keyboards in the UK and in America. Are they really different? We both speak English. We both use the same grammar and characters. This must be a very small difference because I had no idea that the keyboards could be different between the US and UK. I can't even think of what a difference would be. Honestly, well, the UK keyboard doesn't have it has the letter keys in the same exact places. Yeah, but the UK keyboard is going to add in a pound sign, which we don't have in the US. Funnily enough, my UK keyboards do actually have a dollar sign as well. A pound sign. The pound sign like the the cross, the one that looks like a tic tac toe board. A pound sign. I'm, like, I'm not crazy here. That's what a pound sign is, right? <laughs> pound. Sign, I don't wanna, pound sign. Oh, a pound sign! <laughs> the po okay, I'm so glad that I looked that up because I completely misunderstood what she meant by the pound sign. That's a, something we call a character here in the United States. I'm looking down at my keyboard, a pound sign. Sometimes you have to like hit it when you're on the phone Oftentimes when you're talking to a robot on the phone, you have to like hit the pound sign to do something. And this, <laughs> that's not the pound sign I'm thinking of. This is a money character. Not like, a, like we have a dollar sign and this is a pound sign. I'm so glad I looked that up because I was totally wrong. Well, and there are also a couple of other things that are in different places depending on the keyboard. Like the at key is sometimes really? in a different place and like the, quotes key i had what that is so strange to me the pound sign makes complete sense i don't know why wouldn't they just put that on number four like for us we have a dollar sign on the number four key so wouldn't that just be the same but switched in the uk i don't know why they would change around so, like the quotations and some of the other characters like is that just to purely screw with Americans when, <laughs> if we travel to the UK or we're working in the UK, what is the point of that exactly? Is that just to mess people up just to ear Like, <laughs> that seems like sort of an unnecessary change. I'm sure it has a reason, I guess. I had no idea that they were different in this sense when I first moved to the UK. Yeah. And I remember being in the computer lab in the university I was studying at. Yeah. And it was so frustrating because every time I would go to type a particular um, key or symbol, it was always the wrong one. So that- Exactly. With, with a keyboard especially, you build up such intense muscle memory. Man, that would be actually so difficult to overcome. You'd just be typing. Uh, quotation marks when you're trying to make the letter Q. So <laughs> imagine, try, just try to imagine that scenario. It's, it's hell on earth, I tell you. <laughs> that is the first difference that people might not mention. If you buy a laptop in the UK or a keyboard in the UK, some of the symbols are in different places. Yeah, I, I did not know that. That is, that's a perfect example of like a aspect of life in the US and UK. A difference I would never have ever thought of or ever learned about. That's another reason I love videos like this. It's the most random weird stuff that's different sometimes. There's a lot of obvious stuff that's different between the UK and US, like how we talk and the stuff we eat. But these random little differences are so fascinating in their own way. It's so fun. Okay, the next difference has to do with eggs. Eggs. So let's first talk about the fact that in the US, we are most used to seeing white shelled eggs. 
In the UK, yeah. you're mostly going to find brown ones. Now... What? 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 Since when? What? <laughs> what? Has it always been like this? Wait, what? Brown eggs in the UK? This is a thing. This is just a normal thing? How? How, how have I gone through my entire life and never known this? Do people in the UK know that in America we have white eggs? Why are the eggs brown? What does that mean? I, I know brown eggs exist. It's like, aren't they super healthy? Or like, I think they're at Whole Foods store, natural Whole Foods store in America. So places I never get within 10 miles of, of course. But you're telling me that it's normal. Most eggs, like all eggs in the UK, by as a standard, are brown. That's what we're saying? I had absolutely no idea. What makes an egg brown, honestly? The other thing that kind of goes along with this is in the US, we store eggs in home in homes and in the grocery stores or supermarkets in um, the refrigerated section. Yeah. In the UK, you will not find the eggs in grocery stores in the refrigerated section. What? This is something that completely throws you off guard when you first- What? Wait, what? What? Why are there so many weird differences with the eggs? The, the eggs? This is the most random thing I have heard in a long time that the eggs are that different between the US and UK. I'm not even that into eggs. Like eggs aren't that important to me, but I still think this is so random that it's this different. How can you, yeah, in the US, now I don't know if this, if the UK is being strange or maybe we're strange, like I'm open to it. Maybe we're strange. Are, is it strange that our eggs are white? Are they supposed to be brown? Or I think that's more natural. It wouldn't surprise me if the UK has healthier eggs. But why do we need to refrigerate our eggs? Now you're telling me the way we store our eggs is different. Why is that? The UK can just have, you can just have your eggs sitting out? That's convenient. Why, why does the UK get such a convenience of egg storage? And we're out here with our bright white eggs blinding us because they're so bright. <laughs> And uh, having to like store them very meticulously in the cold. I hope she explains some of this. First move here and don't know to expect it because you go up and down the aisles of the refrigerated section looking for eggs and yeah. wondering like why the supermarket doesn't have eggs. Yeah, exactly. Like you would, <laughs> exactly. Americans would go to the cold section where there's refrigerators desperately looking for eggs. Americans better pray they don't have some kind of baking competition they need to get to in the UK, they're not gonna be able to find the eggs because they're not in this, they're not even in the same section. <laughs> and then you find them like normally next to the bread in some of the supermarkets I've been into. There's also wow. other places, depends on the store. But I was so shocked the first time I found the eggs unrefrigerated next to the bread. And the reason for this is there are different processing techniques from the farm to the grocery store, depending on the country. Huh? Uh, Different processing techniques. Different processing techniques. Wow. I mean, gosh. I, I did a, a video recently about the difference between McDonald's in the U.S. and the U.K. And I learned that the U.K. is just a lot more healthy. And every, the ingredients are a lot more healthy in the U.K. I'm, think, I'm guessing the process of, of uh, taking care of and preparing eggs in the U.K. is probably more healthy because I, I associate brown eggs with like natural whole, whole foods stores here in America. It's, it's rare to find a brown egg and that's just normal in the UK. Wow. Um, they leave on the protective layers here in the UK. That basically means that there is little chance of the bacteria or something going wrong with the egg not being refrigerated. Yeah. In the US, there's a really intense um, like washing system that actually strips the eggs of this protective coating. Really? Which means that it then is safer to leave them in the fridge. I'm not completely- Really? That's interesting. I ne I've never heard about any of this. This is, I never thought I'd be so interested in eggs. <laughs> this is like, this is uh, mind blowing to me that I'm this fascinated by eggs and egg cleaning processes right now. But this is, 
funny random difference that uh, really is entertaining me right now. So in the US, we clean the crap out of our eggs so much that we wash off the protective coating, the natural protective coating that allows you to store an egg in normal room temperature. Why do we do that? What? Like, we're taking off a natural part of the egg. Now we have to refrigerate it. I, I am really wondering, why, why do we do things the way we do in America? Why? Can, can anyone explain this to me? Up to date on different food processing techniques, and so I'm not saying one is better than the other, but the countries do it differently. Yeah. And because they do it differently, it means that the eggs can be stored or have to be stored in different ways. We actually huh. store some of our eggs like on the counter and some of our eggs in the fridge, which I don't really know why we do that huh. um, here in our house. But if you go into a British grocery store... Oh, yeah, I would. I would find it so bizarre to see eggs sitting out in the open. I, like, it would trigger something in my brain. I'd be like, that's not right. Like, those are going to go bad. What are you doing? Why are they brown? Like, <laughs> I'd be having a... But now I know. Now I am prepared. This is great. Or do not look for the eggs in the refrigerated section. Huh. The next difference huh. has to do with couponing culture. So if you've lived in the U.S. <laughs> or you know about the U.S. or you've seen the show on TLC like Extreme Couponers, yes. you might know that in the U.S. we are a very coupon-driven society when it comes to consumerism. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. I can't wait to hear. What's the difference here? So yes, in, here in America, people are obsessed with coupons and apps that get you discounts and we're just a lot, we're very cheap here. We're always looking for a nice deal where some people get very obsessed with coupons. Like, like she said, there's entire television shows based around finding good deals at the grocery store with coupons. Is this not how it is in the UK? I, I don't mind this. I think it's kind of fun thing we have. I, is this not such a thing in the UK? So in, we just always like a coupon. Uh, we always like getting a deal and it's not just yeah. like at the grocery store when something is naturally on sale, but we clip coupons. So yes, people cut out paper coupons and you take them to the store and you scan them on the cash register and it gets you deals and it, you feel good. At the end of the day, it's probably just marketing and it's probably just making you buy more stuff, but we love it. We'll buy more stuff if there's a coupon. So different brands send out coupons. So you might get like $2 off a certain brand at oh, any yeah. store that you go to. And so a lot of people in the US- That's a funny thing too, is Americans are like, oh, we get 25 cents off. <laughs> 25 cents off some hot dogs. And it's like, suddenly we're running to the store getting hot dogs that we don't even want just because it's like 25 cents off. US are used to like bringing their coupons to the checkout counter and getting deals. People get like their entire grocery shopping cart for very little money. Yeah. This is a whole thing that people spend their time on doing. Yeah. And just as a society, we are used to the idea of coupons. Wow. I mean, the way she's talking. Is she about to tell me that the coupons are not part of UK society? What's going on here? Brown eggs? We, 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 we got brown eggs, we got pound signs on the keyboard, and we don't have coupons? Here in the UK, really not the case. There wow. are deals on things. You might go into the grocery store and something is marked down, yeah. or there's like a clearance sticker. Yeah on it or there's just like a natural promotion that the store is running. Okay. But the idea of like a coupon book definitely is not in the UK. You would huh, Okay. So in the UK, there are deals. Like you'll walk into a store and maybe you're getting some coffee grounds and it's like two for one sale or something. That still exists. Just not the coupons. I, that's a funny one. I would definitely never have thought of this one. I wouldn't have thought of any of this stuff, honestly. I don't think I would have... I would have spent my whole life not knowing about these very important things, if not for this video. I, I'm very thankful for this information. Wouldn't really clip coupons. Like, I'm trying to think of instances where I've had to present anything to get a deal. Like, there might be... 
But huh. in general, the couponing culture of the U.S. is not replicated in the U.K. Wow. And the idea of, like, buying a book specifically full of coupons to yeah. use at various places, yeah. 100% not a U.K. sensibility. So coupons are, like, an American thing? Are there other countries around the world that use coupons? I'm wondering, is this an American thing? Are we just, like, the only ones he out here falling for coupons? Like, buying all this unnecessary stuff just because we it's fun to cut out pieces of paper and bring them in and it makes you buy, like, 20 cases of toothpaste at a time because it's a deal. It's a, You gotta get it. It's a deal. So... <laughs> this, more I think about it, it's, it feels like a really American thing. <laughs> Another difference are the places that people travel to. So huh. it goes without being said, different countries are going to be closer or further to different destinations. Sure. Obviously, in the U.S., I think we mostly travel within the country. Yeah. And when we do travel outside of the country, popular destinations would be Canada, Mexico, and Western Europe. So coming to the U.K. Yeah. Yeah. In the UK, people do try. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, just to touch on that, it's like amazing. Uh, I, I feel like she's making a point that people in the UK probably vacation a lot more places. Here, here in the United States, people don't have their passport a lot of the time. People don't bother. America is so freaking gigantic. You could spend your whole life and not visit every state. There's so much to see in the United States. A lot of Americans just vacation around the United States. Or you, and there's some countries close to us, but I'm really jealous of Europeans because all the European countries are so close to each other. And I feel like Europeans and people in the UK can just go visit all these countries. Here in the US, leaving the US, leaving the country is a big deal. It's, it's rare. It's a big deal when you hear your somebody you know is like, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm vacationing in Europe. They're, everyone's like, oh my gosh, real, be careful out there. They got brown eggs. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> what's it like in the UK? I'm guessing people travel a lot more. Travel to the States. Also, European travel is popular, but there are places that a lot of people have traveled here that I have never met anybody who had been there before in the U.S. Mm. Places like Thailand. It's really popular oh. here to travel to Thailand. It's a beautiful country, really oh. cheap, and if you take a survey of kind of your neighbors or your friends here in the U.K., somebody is going to know somebody who's been to Thailand, who's gone to Thailand. Really? Thailand? That is very random to me. I know about the country, Thailand. I didn't know anyone vacationed there. I just don't know what's there. What? That is very random to me. But that's funny because for someone in the UK, vacationing to Thailand is just like normal. It's just like, yeah, oh, you went to Thailand. Cool. I've been there. That's, I've never thought about Thailand hardly at all. I don't know what's there. Huh. Or who has a trip planned. In the U.S., this is definitely not a destination that's really on our cultural radar no. in terms of, no. you know, being able to take a poll and easily finding someone who has gone to Thailand. There are other countries like that. I think I've met more people in the U.K. who have gone on vacation or holiday to India than in the U.S. Wow, and, India. Um, just some other, like, Asian destinations as well. Yeah, yeah. Americans don't really vis visit Asia. Some Americans go to Japan. Because then it's like at that point, you can just fly to the West. And if you're on in the Western U.S. and you fly West, like you can get to Japan somewhat easily, I imagine. And yeah, like certainly Americans, like I've never heard of anyone who's been to like India. That would be extremely rare. But in the U.K., I never thought about it. In the U.K., you're closer to a lot of these Asian and other sorts of countries that Americans don't even consider as a possibility, really. And again, this is down to differences in geography and how close or far things are, as well as just the fact that, again, a lot of Americans, if they're going to travel abroad, they're coming here to the UK or somewhere in Western Europe. Yeah. Here in the UK, they're going elsewhere. So that was huh. another difference I noticed in huh. terms of being able to chat to people about their vacations and where they had been. On the top 
Wow, that's fascinating. Okay, what do we have here? So, man, this is really, really interesting stuff. This is actually a great video. We're only halfway done here with these surprising, kind of mind-blowing differences between the UK and US. So, I think I'm going to stop here for now because this is taking a while and I want to I want to enjoy this slowly. And we're halfway done, so I think I'm going to finish this in part 2. So if you've enjoyed this so far, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with any surprising differences between the UK and US that you might have noticed. And if you're interested in part two of this or just more videos like this in general, me reacting to the UK and UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.